Hey, I'm Noah, and today I'm reacting to Band of Brothers, episode 7, titled The Breaking Point. Last episode was really interesting. We got more of an insight on the medical side of battle, and just how truly brutal that side of it can be. And that entire town was just bombed to smithereens, and overall things just haven't been going too well lately. And with our new commander being pretty worthless, I'm worried about the future as well. But overall, I'm excited to hop into this episode. If you enjoyed my reaction, please like, comment, and subscribe. Join the Patreon for early, edited, and full-length reactions. But that's enough talking, let's hop into the episode. My friends, my men being killed. It doesn't take too many days of that, and you change dramatically. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. It was cold, we didn't have any clothes. Everywhere you would look, you would see dead people, you know, a dead soldier there, here, ours, theirs. Sounds like a terrible place to be. Dead animals. Death was all over. Surrounded by death. I had a lot of trouble in later life. Those events would come back, and, and you never forget them. <laughs> yeah. No way you're going to forget anything you've seen here. After holding the line at Bastogne, Easy Company was once again called on to help push the Germans back through the bulge. Easy Company was very busy. Take a platoon, let's go! I was glad to be out of my foxhole and moving again, even if only to get warm. This is interesting, we're getting like an inside the mind perspective. E Company was sent to clear the Bois Jack in preparation for what we all knew would be the eventual assault on Foy itself. This is gonna be a big battle. During that 1,000 yard attack through the woods, we encountered sporadic German machine gun fire and had a couple of casualties, but for the most part, met little resistance. Yeah, only a couple of casualties is somehow seen as a win. Hubler's running with the German officer on horseback was the most dramatic moment of the day. Oh God, what's gonna happen? Oh, got him. Dang, headshot too. Wow. There's a Luger. <laughs> Thank you. And he earned it himself. Hubler had been talking about getting a Luger since Normandy. As we dug in, he went from foxhole to foxhole telling everyone just how he'd finally got one. He's proud. Outstanding accuracy on my part, if I do say so myself. Yeah, it took like four shots. Where's Dyke? He's around. Could you be a little more specific there, Sergeant? <laughs> I say, well, where the hell does he ever go? The leader hiding. It's crazy. Okay, what the hell is <laughs> Oh, boy. Uh -huh. Oh, Jesus, it's who be shot! What? No, no, he he shot himself! What? Playing with his Luger or something? Is he alright? Fuck it, he be alright, who hate Really? Shit, fuck, I wasn't touching her nothing! Damn it, damn it. All these enemies trying to kill you, and you're taking yourself out. Who? Oh, where are you hit? To my left! I don't look who. God dang it. Hopefully I didn't hit one of the arteries. No way he's gonna die from this, is he? That'd be brutal. You think it was a German leg hoop? Come on. Hey, look. That was a great shot, right? Okay, you're a great uh, shot. Uh, a great shot. Didn't miss your leg. Stay with, with us, all right? Stay with us. Oh, I can't see a thing. We gotta get back to an aid station. Oh, yeah. This is seeming pretty bad. Stay there, Hope. Doc. Doc. No way he's gonna die from a leg shot. Self inflicted. No way. Really? He was wearing so many clothes we couldn't tell how bad he was bleeding. By the time we got him to the aid station, he was already dead. What? Bullet cut the main artery in his leg, sir. Yep. I heard that's a bad spot. Cut that main artery in the leg. That's that's it. Wow. All that because he wanted a Luger. What an insane way to go. You wanted to see him, sir? No, I just would have expected to get this kind of news from him. That's what you should expect. I figured it might as well be me. They're still covering for him. He needs to be demoted. Where's Dyke? I probably heard that question a thousand times. There were long stretches where we didn't know where Lieutenant Dyke was. He's really just hiding? Wouldn't have been so bad if he was just one of the guys in the company. But Lieutenant Dyke was supposed to be leading the company. That's insane, man. Dyke wasn't a bad leader because he made bad decisions. He was a bad leader because he made no decisions. <laughs> How did he get promoted, man? Planning a move. So I will probably be called away regularly. <laughs> What's the formation you want us to go for? I'll clarify that with you at a later time, Lieutenant Compton. Yes, sir. So ridiculous. 
All right, I gotta make a call. Just disrespectful, man. This is life or death. Sometimes we got the feeling E Company was an annoyance to him. Something unpleasant he had to get through before he could continue his march up the ladder. That ain't right. That all this where the CEO has got his head so far, his fucking ass, that lump in his throat is his goddamn nose. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be a replacement officer coming in here. You get thrown in with a group of guys who've known each other for what, two years? It is a tough job, but you can at least try. How could anyone really hope to gain the respect of the toughest, most dedicated sons of bitches in the entire ETO? If you ask me, a guy would have to come back with Hitler's mustache or something. <laughs> that would do it. <laughs> you guys don't worry about Dyke. If we all do our jobs, everything will be fine. Luckily, they got enough good leadership without him. But as company first sergeant, it was my job. Not to protect Dyke, but to protect the integrity of the company. He's practically the leader. Division's not gonna let me replace him just because I got a bad feeling about him. Even if they would, who'd I put in his place? Shams? Do not ever talk when I'm talking, you got that? Mm-hmm. Well, thinks he has to yell all the time. Isn't that great? We all know who you'd like to have run easy. Himself. We all agreed Buck Compton would have been the best choice to run easy. But to be honest, Buck wasn't the same soldier he'd been before he got shot in Holland. He's got some serious PTSD now. To do something stupid like that, all right? I've invested too much goddamn time shaping you into something useful. <laughs> that guy's laugh. Self knocked out of this thing. I know, I know. You'll kill me. Even if you're dead, I'll still kill you. <laughs> I'm not saying he's nuts. I'm just saying. What? What are you saying? Ah, oh, forget it. He lost a part of his soul. Oh, come on. You seen him, Bill? He's, he's all wound up like a spring. Hey, hey, hey. He's fine. I mean, he's still cracking jokes and stuff. When getting shot, that got him. It was being in that hospital. I've been there, okay? Yeah. It ain't pretty. Mm. Being in there would be brutal. My brother and I helped my mom run a boarding house. And your father? He was killed when I was 10, sir. Automobile accident. Wow. That's sad. <laughs> this guy's great at small talk. What made you decide to join the paratroopers? I read an article about paratroopers in Life magazine. It said if you wanted to make it as a paratrooper, you had to be the best. I wanted to fight with the best, sir. Respect. Miss what? Huntington. Try not to think about it that much. Just focus on the here and now. Where are you from, sir? This guy. How unlikable can he be? I think I got something that'll help you with your leadership problem. Ooh. Division has decided to pluck one officer from each regiment, send it back to the States on a 30-day furlough. Really? Turns out I've been plucked. That seems like a bad thing. How in the world does your leaving help me? Doesn't, <laughs> I'm not going. Wow, he's not leaving. But I'm sure we can find an officer somewhere in this battalion who could use a long trip home. Can you give us a dike? <laughs> Congratulations, Lieutenant Peacock. I can't think of anybody who deserves this more. <laughs> really glad that you're going home. <laughs> Just gonna give it to everybody they don't like. What are you doing here? I want to head back to the line, sir. You don't have to do that. Get yourself back. He only has one arm. I'd really like to head back with the fellas, sir. All right? Then go. Thank you, sir. Got mad respect for people that are willing to go back. Look who I found. Hey, Joe Toy. Hey, Rick, back from more. How, how are you, Joe? Doing pretty good. Escaped from the A station. Sounds sick. Almost every single one of these guys has been hit at least once. Except for Ali. He's a two-timer. <laughs> George Luz here has never been hit. You're one lucky bastard. Takes one of those. Yep, lucky guy. Hey, that's Popeye. He got shot in his scrawny little butt in Normandy. <laughs> I remember that. Buck got shot in his rather large butt in Holland. <laughs> he got a couple pieces of a tank shell burst in Carentan. One chunk in the face, another chunk almost took out his nuts. That's what those nuts like. Doing fine. <laughs> Nicely to ask. Gotta be glad that didn't happen. He shot 20 POWs? Well, actually, I heard it was more like 30. <laughs> Christensen. Lieutenant Spears. I got the name right, didn't I? Christensen? Oh, boy. What are you men doing out here? We're watching the line, sir. You keep up the good work. While you're at it, you might want to reinforce your cover. Oh, well, actually, sir, Lieutenant Dykes and not even to bother. Lieutenant Dykes said that, huh? <laughs> you gonna listen to what he says? I don't forget what I said. Carry on. It's very... Oh, emotions. anyone care for smoke? <laughs> He's like a scary myth. While we were in the Bois Jacques, the Germans had been shelling our old position. There were signs of tree bursts everywhere. That got our attention. That is worrying. Looking across the field at Foy, I could see enemy troops. I still couldn't see their artillery, but I knew it was down there. And they got white clothes on. Make it even harder. We're gonna strengthen our covers, and we're gonna hang in. We're not gonna fall back. Right, Lieutenant? 
Fine. You all take care of it. <laughs> I gotta go talk to regiment. Of course you do. That's just embarrassing. Oh no. Incoming! Take cover! God dang it. Take cover! There's just nothing you can do about this. So brutal, man. Pretty much just complete luck if you survive. Wow. Shit. God dang. Come on, find some cover! Find some cover! There really isn't much cover around here. For some reason at that moment in that half-finished foxhole, all I could think about was the 4th of July when I was a kid. <laughs> what I saw that day was the most awesome and terrifying display of firepower I'd ever seen in my life. Yeah. I guess you could say it's cool looking if you don't think about all the people dying. Toy got killed, huh? Just as he came back. Yeah, dang it. He's gonna be missing his legs. Oh my god. That sucks, man. Bombs are so unfair. Maybe we should see if anybody's hit. Ah, uh, Malaw gets what they want. Crowds are trying to draw us out in the open. Is Toy the only one that got hit? I got to get up. Wow. I got to get up. He's still pushing. Is that Joe? Yeah, I think that's Joe. Probably nothing we could do at this point. Stay in your foxholes! Help! Help! Anyone there? Dang, what happened to this guy? I ain't gonna... I ain't gonna get up. Dude, if he survives this, I'll be amazed. Come on, Joe. Come on, buddy. Come on. Someone get a belt on there. Anyone there? Hang Help! on. This guy crushed by the tree. Come on, Joe. He hasn't passed out yet. Think I overdid it on a cover for my foxhole? <laughs> no, not again. Ah, dang it, dude. Jeez. Oh wow. It's all around him. Are they okay? During the second barrage, I wasn't laughing anymore. Getting bombed on is so brutal, dude. You're just completely helpless. No, why? Garnier and Toy are dead now? Are you kidding me? First Sergeant Lipton, you get things organized here. I'm gonna go for help. <laughs> it's getting out of you. What the fuck? <laughs> God dang it, man. M M I don't think there's anything that could be done. Oh wow. They're still alive. Thought they were dead. Jesus. What's the guy gotta do to get killed around here? <laughs> Bill, you're going first. Whatever you say, Doc. Whatever you say. Over here! God, that leg. Take it easy. Hey, Joe, I told you I'd beat you back to the States. <laughs> so he's got a good sense of humor. How's Buck? How's Buck? He's fine. You sure? Uh, you should probably go talk to him now, huh? He's not doing okay mentally. Some say Buck changed after he was shot in Holland. But I know something happened to him when he saw Toy and Garnier on the ground. A breaking point, huh? On the report, it said Compton was being taken off the line because of a bad case of trench foot. Didn't say anything about him losing his friends. Wow. Being taken out of the line because of his trauma. UCLA did not make the Rose Bowl this winter, probably because you weren't there. <laughs> and how your heart and love. He doesn't want to hear it. I guess he just couldn't take seeing his friends Toy and Garnier all torn up like that. No one ever thought any less of him for it. Yep, definitely not. That is insanely brutal. With Buck off the line, there was no longer any possible alternative to Dyke. At least none we could see. I mean, Lipton's not bad. He was stuck with Dyke. He's over there. And he was off taking a walk. <laughs> Always taking a walk. You organize things here, and I'm gonna go for help. 
Hey, Lars. Complete asshole. That's really good. That was pretty ridiculous. What can I do for you, Sarge? Two things. First, great impression of Dyke. <laughs> Second, don't do it anymore. Especially the part about what he said to me. Yeah. Lipton's trying to keep the positive image. No. We really just have to stay here. Get bombed over and over. Doesn't seem like there's anything we can do about it. Oh god, that was so close. No way he's not gonna make it. No! Wow. Good thing he didn't make it to them. Jeez. I feel like you're you're not safe anywhere. Nowhere is really safer than the next. Oh my god. I don't know if there's anything more brutal than this. Oh no. They're not gonna die, are they? That one didn't blow. I would probably try to get away from that. But you didn't smoke. <laughs> I don't. Uh -huh. I'd be more freaked out looking at that thing. The shell that hit the foxhole Luz and I were in was a dud. The one that hit Muck and Pinkala's foxhole wasn't. That's just the way it was. Just the luck of the draw. Their death hit Malarkey the hardest. Malarkey's best friends in the company had been Compton, Muck, and Pinkala. In less than a week, he'd seen two of them die. And the other leave. Bertie's just been resupplied. We're in good shape. Okay, we'll just hunker down. We might get some relief soon. We're really just gonna stay here? I don't see how that's a good thing. I mean, we're holding the line to a certain degree, but we're just getting slaughtered. Didn't I hear you say you wanted to, uh, bring a Luger home for your kid brother? Yeah. Why don't you give him that? There we go. It's hoops, right? Yeah. I don't know. Just don't put it in your pocket. Why don't you at least come back for an hour or so? Say goodbye to Buck. I'm sure it'll mean a lot to him. All right. You be careful with that. Yeah. Getting even 50 yards back from the line just for an hour or two could make a big difference in a soldier's state of mind. Yeah, give you a mental reset. I saw a soldier try to dig a foxhole with his bare hands. He didn't notice that he'd torn off all his fingernails. Oh, God. That's horrible. Fear is poison in combat. It's something we all felt, but you just didn't show it. You can't. It's destructive, and it's contagious. Yep, fear is contagious. Buck was never the same after seeing Toy and Garnier get hit that day. I guess he just needed some time away from it all. But it looked like they're gonna live. The barrages on January 3rd and the shelling on January 9th marked the low point in the war for many of the men in E Company. Even then, very few actually broke. Wow. It's amazing that so many of the people actually didn't break. Now it was time for the inevitable assault on Foy itself. Now I was beginning to wonder if any of us were going to make it through at all. This is going to be a big battle, huh? The problem was, at least in my estimation, E Company still did not have a leader. You're the leader. I have every confidence in the men, sir. But on the other hand, I have no confidence in our CO, sir. He's got to say it. He's not there, sir. Well, he's going to he be knows. there tomorrow. Yes, sir. I understand he will be there physically. <laughs> he's going to have to make decisions, sir. And I, I got to tell you, sir, I think he's going to get a lot of easy company men killed. Yeah, we can't be messing around with this stuff. Thank you, Sergeant. That'll be all. Yes, sir. Like, are we really willing to risk everybody's lives just for some weird politics? It's insane. Get in there before they can bring their mortars and artillery down on you. Clear? Clear. I'm relying on you. Get it done. Can you step up when we need him? The yawning. Covering fire! Let's go! Keep it moving! Here we go. In the open range. Where the hell is first platoon? Oh my god. Is it really a good time to hold up? Move! Get me Foley on the radio. Get out of there! Move! Oh my god. He's messing up. Sometimes you just gotta stop listening to him. <laughs> He's really gonna get people killed, man. Fall back! Fall back! Go forward! We're not supposed to be falling back. Why are we stopped? Get Dyke on that radio to me now! Yeah, Lieutenant, what's the plan? Captain Winner, what's the plan? He's not made for this. 
take your men on a flanking mission around the village and attack it from the rear. Do our first platoon to go around right and attack the village by its. <laughs> yeah. We will provide suppressing fire. This is so bad. They really just listen. Oh come on. We go on a flanking run around the back of the village, and we attack from the rear. Ramirez, two guys, take him. Go. They're really gonna do it. Not a good idea. It's crazy that Winters just has to sit there and watch, knowing he could lead them so much better. No. He shot me my ass, boys! Join the club. Sir, we are sitting ducks here. We have to keep moving! Dude, with your lives on the line, you gotta just try to do what's best. You do not go Tell the battalion commander now, get back here! Come on. Spurs, get yourself over here! Get out there and relieve Dyke and take that attack on in! We need to do something. Hang on, Virgo! Jesus. I'm taking over. Precision liquor! Wow, he's gone. Alright, I want mortars and grenade launchers on that building till it's gone. When it's gone, I want first to go straight in. Forget going around. Everybody else follow me. Yes, sir. <laughs> Spears is good in combat. I mean, that's like such an obvious play using orders for the building. Fire! Come on, move out! Just gotta keep pushing forward. Fire! Fire! Luckily, they're not, they're not super accurate. Hey, you get over here. Take the fire! We're pushing in. Oh. Got some shrapnel in the face. Wow. So this guy's just running in the open. The Germans didn't shoot at him. I think they couldn't quite believe what they were seeing. <laughs> the bravest man in the world. The astounding thing was that after he hooked up with Eye Company, he came back. This guy's a badass. A pure soldier. Kind of dang. We won. We took over a hundred German prisoners. After that, it was mostly clean. There we go. Finally, did something good. No. What the heck? Come on, come on. We didn't account for that one. Second floor, building on the right. Don't miss Shifty. What was he hiding? Come on. Yes! That guy's a good shot. Wow, running out there is bait. Crazy. Mellet, Heron, Sawasco, and Ken Webb were killed by a sniper. There would have been more if it hadn't been for Shifty Powers. Wow. So unlucky. Didn't see that guy coming. Is Shifty known as the best shot? You hit bad, Bracanti? Shot me right through my ass. <laughs> Did you about Dyke? Yeah. Thank God for small mercies, huh? Dyke just wasn't built for this. We'd been looking down at the town of Foy for the better part of a month, knowing that's where we had to go. It was a great relief to have done it. After all they went through. Two days later, we took Noville, and after that, Rashan. Get no breaks whatsoever. Wonder which company fought in the most battles. We spent our night in Rashamp in a convent. It was the first time we'd spent a night indoors in a month. Must feel nice. We'd come into Belgium with 121 men and officers plus 24 replacements. We were going out with 63. Wow. That is brutal. You want to ask me, don't you? You want to know if they're true or not, the stories about me. You ever notice with stories like that, everyone says they heard it from someone who was there. And then when you ask that person, they say they heard it from someone who was there. <laughs> so are the stories not true then? Maybe they kept talking about it because they never heard Tercius deny it. Yeah. Maybe that's because Tercius knew there was some value to the men thinking he was the meanest, toughest son of a bitch in the whole Roman Legion. He's got a point. They're happy to have a good leader again. Well, from what I've heard, they've always had one. I've been told there's always been one man they could count on. Yep, Lipton's been the leader for a while now. You don't have any idea who I'm talking about, do you? <laughs> no, sir. Hell, it was you for a sergeant. Ever since Winter's made battalion, you've been the leader of Easy Company? Mm-hmm. Too humble to see it. Oh. 
And uh, you're not going to be a first sergeant much longer, first sergeant. Sir? Getting a promotion? You should get the official nod in a few days. Congratulations, Lieutenant. Well deserved. See, he's becoming a full time smoker now. <laughs> Yep, Easy's always riding out. Yep, the mind was destroyed in this one. Yep, definitely bonded for life after what you go through. That's the episode. Well, that was a pretty brutal episode. A lot of the main characters of the show were taken out. I think Toy and Garnier survived though, just both losing a leg, but I'm guessing they're just grateful to be alive at this point. And then Compton seeing that happen really took a big toll on him. He was already suffering pretty badly, and that was the breaking point. So it sucks to see him go as well. And then everyone's glad to see Dyke go. Can't blame him for being super scared and everything, but when you're a leader, you either have to step up or step down, and he wasn't doing either, and he was leading people to their deaths. So I'm glad he got taken out. And even though this episode was brutal, it was one of the first in a while that we actually had some sort of win, actually being able to capture Foy in the end. But of course the battle's not over yet, and Easy Company has even more work to do. And I'm excited to see the next few episodes. If you enjoyed my reaction, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.